Guys, I'm going to make this video as short and sweet as I possibly can. Obviously, this has been a topic that I haven't touched yet on the channel, and I've talked about it on stream when we're having our just chatting sessions and people are asking and, you know, we're talking about what what the events that unfolded at Astroworld and people want to know, like, what I think happened and what and who I think is at fault. So obviously, first and foremost, the thoughts and prayers of everybody, I'm sure, in the rap community are going out to the eight is it eight or nine people that have lost their lives and the families that are grieving over that? And not to mention all the people that got hurt in the basically a stampede to the front of the stage. And it's just it's a it's a tragedy that obviously it's a tragedy. But when you look back at it and you look at the behaviors and the things that Travis Scott has incentivized basically with his fans to do and act and how he and how he wants them to behave, he has quote unquote considered himself a rager. If there was any concert, any festival that this tragedy was going to happen at, it was going to be Travis Scott's. And really the question that is on everybody's mind and the people, what people want to know from me when we talk about it on stream is, do I consider Travis Scott at fault? And yes, I 100% do. I'm not saying it's only his fault. Obviously, a lot of the blame is going to be placed on the on the company that held the event. The blame is partly going to be on them for not having proper security, not having proper medic tents, not having proper procedures to get ambulances and to get four by fours that are there for for medic purposes to get them and for it just to run efficiently and smoothly. Obviously, there's going to be blame there. And that's where most people, especially Travis fans, are going to shift the blame. But in my eyes, as someone who is 32 years old, Travis is just as much to blame for for the tragedy as the event coordinators, the event planners and the event company. And I guarantee you, once these lawsuits start coming down and they already are coming down, Travis is going to be listed as one of the people that is being sued. Obviously, the overall experience is being sued, but Travis Travis as an individual is being sued and it's going to be really hard to ignore the fact that he is going to be partially to blame and mainly it's going to be because of his past actions and behaviors. People are going to screenshot his tweets. They're going to screenshot his videos that basically show that he he incentivizes this behavior. He incentivizes this this rager experience and that's fine whenever you're at a concert that has 10,000 people or you're at a stadium concert where people have seats and, and like there's no way to push to the front but whenever you're talking about 80,000 people and basically incentivizing them to rush to the front of the stage like people are gonna get trampled on and that's why I said if it was going to happen anywhere, it was going to happen at Astroworld because what is Astroworld Astrofest is going to happen there because because he incentivizes it. And on top of that, like the the rap culture doesn't really have any kind of mosh pit protocol. Like if you go to a rock concert, there there might be it might look like it's hectic, it might look like it's chaotic, but there is 100% etiquette that is happening in these mosh pits to make sure that people don't get hurt. Are people still going to get hurt? Of course, you're pushing people around. People are falling down. People are getting up. It's bound to happen that you're going to get hurt, but you don't hear of people dying. The same can go for EDM and EDC. I've gone to five EDCs, maybe four or five EDCs at this point. I've been in a sea of 100,000 people at Kinetic Field at EDC for an EDM show and literally zero have died. And that's because people take care of each other. That's because people, while they are hyped and while everybody's going crazy, they still have, they're still polite. They, they still know the rules of, of what's happening around them. Travis almost at this point incentivizes people to not, not I mean, not know the rules. I mean, there's really no way to set rules or boundaries, but he incentivizes people to have this rager experience and people don't know what they're doing. So people end up getting hurt. And in this point, unfortunately killed. And at this point, people are going to be saying, yeah, but there's no way that he could have known all of this was happening in the sea of 80,000 people. He's just the artist up there performing. And well, yes, that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% sure in the video where he's looking down at the dude who was passed out getting carried out, who was actually confirmed one of the deceased, Travis was looking at that person dead. There's no way that he could hear the crowd. He's got $3,000 in-ear monitors that are feeding him all the audio. Like, yeah, he paused the he paused the concert, but at the end of the day, it is his responsibility. It's his name on the company. It's his name on the brand and the festival. He is 100% the face of everything. And the perception is the reality. And the perception is that in this moment, he didn't even stop the concert. He stopped it enough to be like, hey, can we get this person some help and keep humming and trying to keep the vibe up? And from the videos that I've seen and from what I've read is that the concert never stopped. And that is going to be the most damning piece of evidence, especially when you consider his prior history as to why Travis 
is at fault. At least from what I've seen, it didn't look like he cared enough about what was happening. He more cared about the performance and the show and the vibe that everybody was having than he did about this one thing that he was literally seeing with his eyes. There's footage of him above the crowd and you can see the ambulance coming and still nothing. Not, not one of his crewmates was like, yo, like in his ear, like, yo, we got the situation happening. Stop the show for a little bit. Maybe even just offer some like, hey, Everybody be safe out there. Don't let, don't trample anybody. He didn't do any of that. Everything that I've seen, this has never been brought up. And now, of course, the Linkin Park clip is going viral. And so is the Cardi clip that's going viral of them stopping the show and saying, yo, I need y'all guys to be safe. Y'all guys' health is more important than this fucking show. That's what Chester Bennington said, RIP. Like, I don't give a damn about this show. I care about y'all as people. And there was just none of that with Travis Scott. And then on top of that, the video of him apologizing, I don't even think he apologized in the video. And I don't think that he really said anything and it's probably going to be because at this point his lawyers are like don't say sorry don't have any admission of guilt anything that could even be skewed as it's your fault so but we know you have to release something so release a video saying prayers are going out to the family there's going to be travis heads out there there's going to be people that care about him as an artist so much that they're ride or die and they're going to think that he has nothing at fault here but what blows my mind the most is that is that like how could you defend an artist how could you defend somebody that clearly doesn't give a fuck about the safety of his fan base when they're at the shows he cares more about the rager experience than he does about the fan base and the health of the fan base I will never understand why people are so fucking infatuated and they want to know about this person's life to like about like a complete stranger. Yes, I get that you are passionate about their music, but this person, this artist at the end of the day does not even know who you are and they could give a fuck less about you. And people are going to say, no, Travis cares about his fans. People who are hyper fans, they know that their artist cares about them as a hyper fan. If there's anything that says that you are incorrect about that statement, it is the nine people that have died at Astroworld. I'll never understand the infatuation and just, I need to know everything about this person's life. I'll never learn understand the, oh, Kylie's having another baby. Everybody reposted on their story. I, it, it might be because I'm a dude and it might be because I'm 32 going on 33 that I just don't give a fuck. But if there's any damning evidence for you on your side, if you do give a fuck that tells you that the artist that you give a fuck about doesn't give a fuck about you, it's the fact that nine people are dead and they were probably diehard Travis fans, and Travis did not stop the concert. He did not say any kind of words of safety during the concert. Nothing. The people that are hyper fans of Travis Scott, if he had stopped the concert and said, yo, I just saw somebody get carried passed out. I need y'all to everybody take three steps back. I need y'all to get enough like elbow breathing room, and then we'll continue the concert. If he had said that, Everybody would have listened because everybody's a fan and they're and they hang on every word that he says. So these hyper fans that rush the stage, if he had only said, hey, bro, I need you to take a couple steps back, they would have done the same thing. But nah, all we do is incentivize the craziness and nine people die.